This is the complete senior software engineer roadmap for 2026. If you are still stuck at the same level for years as a developer, are underpaid, worried about layoffs and cannot design systems from scratch, but you want to be able to land senior roles in 2026, make multi six figures, never fear of being replaced again, become confident in architectural decisions and get the work-life balance and remote flexibility, then this roadmap is what will get you there in 2026. Most developers think that you need to wait for 5 to 10 years and then you will one day become a senior developer, which is completely not true. You won't get there by just waiting. And also, I got my first senior title by the second year of my career. So you don't need to be sitting and waiting until one day you become senior. You can get there if you already have 2 to 3 years of experience. You can get there within months and not years. My name is Haik Simonian. I worked with dozens of companies as a software engineer, made over seven figures in my career, and now I help mid-level developers break through this trap and get to senior roles faster. In this video, I'm breaking down the three core pillars that you need to master to get there, plus a bonus one that will give you an edge over other engineers. So you will be also able to download this below the video for free. And with that, let's get started with the first pillar. The first part that you need to get started with is the technical foundation that you have, because once you landed your role and if you've been working there and not leveling up separately as a developer, then you probably have some knowledge gaps. These can be knowledge gaps in your tech stack. So whether you're a front end back end developer or a full stack developer, you probably have some knowledge gaps in some areas that you didn't have time to work on. So this is where you need to first gather these parts and then fill in the knowledge gaps before moving on to the more advanced skills. And then next is the system design fundamentals that you need to learn because nowadays the most appreciated part from companies is developers who can design systems from high level and think from the business point of view as well. Although that's a separate skill that we have in the pillar three but you need to basically able to know the system design concepts and how they are applied in the system that you are working on. Next, you need to learn about clean code and design patterns. But one trap to watch here for is don't spend too much time here on just learning resources because most of the resources online assume that you are the one who's writing the code from scratch and you're designing it your way which is almost never the case. You usually join a project that already exists and you need to basically write code and clean code here means something different than the online resources that you see often. So also they teach you some imaginary situations like dogs, cats and animals or rectangles, circles and some shapes, right? So that doesn't apply anyway to the real production systems that you're working on. So instead try to be practical and learn a few design patterns and see where they can be applied to instead of trying to throw all the design patterns into your system even though you don't need it at all. Next is a bit uh, small one in this roadmap overall compared to the rest is the engineering principles that you need to be aware of. These are things like solid, keys, dry and other principles that we normally use in software engineering. So you need to at least be familiar with this and how they apply to the real production systems that you're working on. And lastly, in this first pillar is the automated testing. So if you still have some knowledge gaps about the end-to-end -end tests, about the unit integration tests or performance testing with tools like K6, then this is where you need to learn about it so that you can also put your systems into a load test when needed and see when it breaks and how do you scale it from there. And each of these that I say is pretty high level, of course, but below the video where you will find this free roadmap, you will also find a version where you will have each of these broken down into its own components. So for example, for system design, there is a whole big roadmap that you need to follow but at this step, I'm keeping it high level so that we can see what are the pillars that you need to master in a categorized way. So after this step, you should be able to explain concepts confidently once you learned this in a theory. 
But the problem here is that you cannot still build production systems because you just watched some resources, but you didn't apply anything. And because of that, you cannot pass senior interviews yet because you will be called once you start talking about load balancing, but you cannot explain, for example, what are the algorithms you used to set up your load balancing, what is the service that you used in AWS, let's say, and whether you used layer 4 or layer 7 load balancing. And that's just one example from each of these concepts that you will learn. You can get asked questions which are deeper about the project that you worked on. And if you didn't apply them anywhere, then you won't be able to explain it. That's why we have the second pillar, which is getting the real production architecture experience. So here, the first part is you need to get experience with building and scaling production systems, whether it's the systems that you're working on with your company, or if you don't, then you need some way to build a production system and scale it to more users or more traffic and be able to implement all these concepts that you learned from system design. Once you start building such a system, you will also come to making a decisions with architectural impact. So you need some sort of framework for making these decisions and running them through some trade-off process and deciding what is the best solution for the specific software that you're working on. And it also includes the designing phase of the system. Of course, you don't start coding right away when you get the requirements for any system. So you need to be familiar with how the blueprinting process goes. How do you transition from there to technical design? How do you discuss the trade-offs and analyze them and come up with the most optimal solution in your opinion? And then also be able to plan the capacity of a system if it's something new or some new feature that increases the capacity. How do you plan for it and how do you estimate the costs? Then you'll need to learn about the latest best practices of designing systems. Most of the softwares that you will join nowadays will be using some sort of microservices. You need to be familiar with event-driven design. You need to be familiar with TDD and other latest best practices when designing softwares and production systems. And of course, while working on this, you will gain experience with at least one of the cloud providers. The top ones are AWS, Azure or Google Cloud. If you're not sure at all and your company doesn't use one, First of all, if your company does use one, I would recommend going with that one. So if you're using Azure, then learn the Azure specifics and cloud service. Otherwise, if you don't have anything that your company uses or it's like an unknown cloud service, then I would recommend learning about AWS because this is the most in-demand one if you're going to apply for new roles. And overall, throughout this process, you will learn about the well-architected framework to be able to plan for all the six pillars like scalability, security, and all of the components that are needed for real production systems. With that, if you build one real, like large project with large infrastructure, you will at least cover the basics of production architecture. So at this step, you can design and build systems from scratch because you did it or you worked on one project that contains all the concepts that you need to know. And you can also explain architectural decisions because you've at least implemented some big features or some real systems from scratch instead. That's even better. But the problem here that might be is you cannot position yourself still as an A tier because you might still master all the technical concepts and all the architectural skills. But if you cannot position yourself as the top engineer, then you might not even surpass the six figures. And that's why we have the third pillar, which is about the positioning. So this is where you learn about how to position yourself as the top engineer for companies. This is the pre-application process. If you're applying for new roles, this includes like optimizing your resume, your LinkedIn, and basically positioning pre-call. But also you need to master the communication, collaboration, and teamwork and be able to present this in the calls, in interviews. And you need to basically get excellence in interviews. No matter if it's data structures and algorithms, system design, behavioral, of course you might hate, let's say, data structure algorithm type of questions in interviews, 
But if that's part of the game and that's what you need to learn to be able to ace the first stage, then you need to learn that. So there is no other way around it if you're, let's say, in US and their data structures and algorithms is a pretty common one that they ask in interviews you need to basically learn this skill. Otherwise, you might lose pretty good opportunities that come your way because you don't know this skill. The next one that not many people actually talk about is the sales skills as a developer. And I'm not talking about you need to learn how to sell things to people or try to do whatever like cold calling. I'm talking about selling your expertise and your skills in the interview. So you need to be able to present your projects that you worked on in a way that shows the business ROI and not just the features that you worked on, like dockerizing some microservice, building a microservice from scratch, increasing test coverage. That is not talking about from the business point of view, you're just talking about some technical terms, but that doesn't really show what is the value that you bring to the company. And last part of this puzzle is the salary negotiations so that you are not underpaid. Because if you don't negotiate your salary when joining, most of the time you will be underpaid because they have some, uh, let's say, limits that they can go up to to meet your demand. But if you don't ask for it, then you will never get and you need to also know how to ask for it. But there is also another caveat here is that some companies, they just have it listed as it is and it's not changeable. It's very rare, but it's possible. And basically you need to be able to differentiate when it's the case for asking for the raise and when it's the case for just accepting whatever the offer is. But I would say that in 90% or more cases, if you just know how to ask for it and how to position yourself as an ROI to the business with this skill above that, you will be able to increase it by at least 20%. Of course, again, these are pretty high level, so you will see the more in-depth ones for each of these components that I listed here in the below resource. But once you master the third layer as well, at this point, you can already design systems from scratch. You can also pass interviews and negotiate the salary because you learned the skill. And at this point, you are already irreplaceable because if you master all these skills, then even if you are replaced in the company, you will basically be able to land another role within weeks and not just months or years. So irreplaceable doesn't always mean that you will be always there in the same company for 20 years. It basically means that you can get another role whenever needed. That's way better than just being stuck at the same company for 10 years. But I want to give you also a bonus skill that if you master that will give you an extra edge over other developers and that is learning the latest hot topics that all the companies are looking for. That is the AI skills, prompt engineering, MCP servers, rock systems, basically being able to implement these tools into their systems if they need it. Everyone is actively incorporating this into their systems, no matter if they are startups or enterprise companies and those who already incorporated, they are looking for someone who has these skills to enhance that. So you can think of this as structured from two paths. So one is you learn about AI assisted development to do your job faster. So you learn about all the tools that you can use to help you get your job done faster. But then the second part of that is how to help companies to integrate this into their system. This is where you will learn about prompt engineering, for example, because all these companies that are incorporating some LLM into their system, you need some prompt engineering and good prompt engineering to be able to get the best results. You need to be using some MCP servers to give it the right context to be able to execute it. And there are many MCP servers nowadays and more are being built every week. So you need to know how to incorporate MCP servers into systems or into your workflow to help you do your job faster. And most importantly about RAG systems, because most of these AI startups nowadays are RAG systems that basically take one LLM model and then combine a bunch of tools to provide valuable feedback or valuable output for the users. So knowing RAG systems and how they work and what are the tools that we use is very valuable, especially if you're interviewing again with AI startups, but no matter like even if you're interviewing with large companies, they are always looking for these skills. So this will at least help you 
double your development speed if you learn how to use the proper tools properly with your development but it can also give you the extra edge for companies that you're interviewing with who are looking for these skills and that's the three pillar roadmap that you can master in 2026 to get to senior roles and senior salaries you'll be able to download this resource for completely free in the description below and you will also see for each of these components that i mentioned you will see a separate roadmap that will include what are the things, for example, you need to learn for system design, what are the things you need to learn for design patterns and all of the other small components that I mentioned. They also have their extended versions on what are the things to learn to master that specific skill.